I want to throw at you. Phillies outfielders not named Bryce Harper. 202 average, 645 OPS. That's yeah, glaring. Yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's an incomplete team at this point in time. But when you lose Rio Muto and you lose Harper, man, you really are going to have a tough time putting up points because their offense is kind of built around those guys. Off to go see your son play at Vanderbilt. you excited? Not playing a whole lot yet. Maybe next year. Very excited. But SEC, you're going to be using But I'm going to go down and watch the games in Hoover this week, and I'm really excited. Look forward to seeing Dan's insight when it comes to draft, as always. For Dan O'Dowd, I'm Adnan Burke. Phillies and the Marlins coming up right here on YouTube. Enjoy the game, everybody. Look at this. Can we call the game from this exact spot? Lunchtime in South Florida, or maybe breakfast for the late wake-up crowd. And this ballpark barely rested from last night to today's 12-10 Eastern first pitch. Tight games in this series. One more to go for a global audience. This is the MLB Game of the Week, live on YouTube, presented by Glad You Asked. We're in South Florida to put a lid on a four-gamer between the Philadelphia Phillies and the Miami Marlins. At Lone Depot Park, I'm Scott Braun, along with two of my very good friends, Dan Plesak right here. And Cliff Floyd is actually in the studio, just distance for <laughs> us. You get your own room, Cliff. Yeah. I'll start off with two trivia questions. Just raise your hand if you were the first Marlins player to ever have your own bobblehead at a game. Go ahead. There we go. Okay. Now, okay. raise your hand if you were the last Phillies pitcher <laughs> to close out Veterans Stadium. Okay, good. <laughs> Just wanted to go over some resume action. Uh, and now we can begin to this global audience on YouTube. We are streaming live. It's free. YouTube.com slash MLB. We're on MLB's YouTube channel, which features almost 3 million subscribers. In fact, we might hit the magic number today. Someone might click subscribe and be number 3 million on the channel. We do all kinds of amazing things here. We'll chat with players during the game, mic'd up content on the field. It's gold. Many other special features coming your way. And let's start with the visiting team on this matchup. Nine consecutive non-winning seasons for Philadelphia. They've been spending big and trying to wipe that away. MVPs like McCutcheon and Harper and then a little pitching. Zach Wheeler signed away from the Mets. Look at the chunk of change it took to get all of these guys, including JT Real Muto. They re-signed D.D. Gregorius as well. Two years, 28 million bucks. The payroll is north of 200 million this season, Dan. The Philly Fanatics priceless, by the way. Yeah, and managing general partner John Middleton literally sold the shirt off the Fanatics' back <laughs> to put this team together. It hasn't been for a lack of effort, though. You're right. And, hey, right now, McCutcheon's out today. Bryce Harper is on the injured list. So, t so is JT Real Muto. So who's going to step up for this team? I think right now it's going to have to be Reese Hoskins. And he's starting to hit the ball to all fields as of late. You look at the numbers, Scott, and they're not indicative of a guy that's seeing the ball better. You see since April 27th, only two home runs. But he's starting to make better contact. Hit a big home run in the Phillies 2-0 win when Vince Velasquez pitched very well. He's starting to hit the ball to right and right center field when he gets the occasional ball on either third or breaking ball. He'll pull it for a home run. They need Reese Hoskins in the worst way to get going. When he debuted in August of 2017, he hit 11 homers in his first 18 games. Look at his NL ranks since his debut. The work has been there. We've seen a little change to his hitting profile this year. Less walks, more strikeouts. He had more power in April than we've seen in May, but he did homer in this series. So he'll help support that luxury bell. And for the Marlins, they're one of the lowest payroll teams in Major League Baseball yet. Cliff, they're keeping up. They'll go against Spencer Howard, but they will be throwing Pablo Lopez on the mound today, who loves the home cooking. He's a really nice guy, but then he's not a fun A.B. No, you're absolutely right, Scott. And I think the biggest thing with, with Pablo, he's made some major strides. Just sort of defining his repertoire, understanding what he needs to do to be a good quality pitcher in this league. And when you look at his changeup and some of the things he's been able to do as far as making sure he gets longevity, you know, out of, out of his outings, making sure that he understands uh, what he has to do consistently to get these big league hitters out, especially guys like Reese Hoskins, is, you know, keep these guys off balance. I've always felt that when you look at the fastball changeup combination, 
it works. It really keeps guys off balance. And this is going to sort of lean into what I'm talking about. You see his fastball against lefties. You know, getting in on a guy like Josh Bell is not easy to do. Brandon Bell right here, he jams him, gets him off of him. But you have to be able to have the change up in your sort of secondary pitches to sort of get your fastball where you need to be. You can't be a fastball type of guy all the time. So you see the box move over a little bit. That ball right there is running in on a hitter that is looking and trying, trying to cheat. A guy like Paul Goldsmith, you're not going to get him out consistently if you're a one-dimensional pitcher. you got to get in those hands. And a guy like Barnes, a really good hitter, also showing quick to the baseball. Pablo has done a terrific job of keeping you guys off balance, U utilizing his, his changeup. And when you talk about this rotation and, and talking about length and longevity, not just this year, but long term, Pablo Lopez is going to be in a mix because he's learning how to pitch. His ERA is going down from 2019 when it was over five, and now he's around two, two, seven. That is him understanding what he has to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm down there watching these guys. It's going to be fun to watch. StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud showing us all the strikeouts with the changeup. His changeup usage second highest in Major League Baseball to Lucas Giolito. So we'll see those two on the mound. There are some big names missing for both sides. And for more on documenting that, let's send it over to Christina DiNicola, fourth member of our crew. And she is in Miami at the ballpark. Christina? Thanks, Scott. I'm here at Lone Depot Park where the injury depleted Marlins hope to get a big reinforcement this weekend when they begin a three-city trip in Boston. Center fielder Starling Marte began a rehab assignment with Triple A Jacksonville on Tuesday, where he played two games. Now, at the time of the injury, he had started all 15 games in center and had moved toward the top of the lineup because of his production. In his absence, the Marlins have gone with four different center fielders and none have stuck. They were so desperate for production that they even turned to Adam Duvall with just one inning of experience. Needless to say, the Marlins will welcome Marte gladly. Back to you, Scott. Pablo Lopez loves the home cooking. He loves his changeup, too, and he's on the mound for the world to see. Live on YouTube, lineups in first pitch from Miami on the way.